This is Sneaker Gears. My name is Levi, and welcome to another Performance Gears episode where today we're looking at the most comfortable and extravagant shoe you can buy in the market that I don't recommend. Let's jump right in. New to the channel, please consider subscribing. It really does help the channel out. And thank you for joining in. Now, we just did a video on the top five most comfortable sneakers on the market. And those are overall comfort over everything. So not the most comfortable dress shoes or not the most comfortable basketball shoes, just purely the most comfortable. Now, we are going to have a follow-up on... I don't know how to call it. So I appreciate you guys commenting. Let me know. Not the worst five but just the top five that didn't make the cut. So maybe there's six through 10, but I definitely wanna go over the reasons why you probably shouldn't buy these shoes and you have the other ones as better options. But today, we are looking at one of the biggest brands in the world trying to get into the running game with the most comfortable sneaker they can come out with. And that's the Jordan Trunner Ultimate. All right, this shoe is truly remarkable in the fact that it really has some unique characteristics that I haven't seen on any shoe before, or at least not a very long time. So if we take a look here, and I'll have some close-up shots, essentially this has full-length zoom, full-length zoom, guys, that is completely exposed. You can see it. We really haven't had anything like that. So what that does is similar to the KD12 on the basketball side, and if you're on the running side, maybe you haven't experienced this, it allows that zoom to kind of refract and react to your movements. So it's even more bouncy. So on top of full length zoom, which we've had, but not in this external setup where you can see it and can really expand and contract, it's double stacked four foot zoom. <laughs> Again, we haven't seen this on a running shoe except for the closest thing would be the Alpha Fly that has those giant stacks of zoom air in the forefoot. That would consider be, be maybe a double or triple stack with the size of what those are. So you're getting the forefoot zoom stack height of something like the Alpha Fly, that's a $275 shoe. You have a full length zoom setup that's exposed that we've never seen on any shoe. Now it's going the way of kind of elite racers where there's not actually much of a heel cup. If you guys can see, it's really floppy, but it does fit. It has kind of that Adidas style cellular mesh upper, very breathable, moves with your foot. All of this is really high end stuff. Now, Jordan brand being more of a basketball shoe, they have added these plastic shanks here on either side. And what that does is, and kind of like Seth, uh, what is it, Chess Games or more, SJD, if you guys follow him in the running side, he always does the twist test. You can see this doesn't twist at all. There is a lot of structural rigidity to this or torsional rigidity. But the problem is that doesn't translate into the run at all which is crazy. So I'll get into the specs here in a moment, but you have a cushion setup that is elite. You have an upper that really is you, you elite and lightweight. And then you have this setup here that should provide a lot of security and stability all on something that has a nice kind of rockered shape to it. It's not flat, so it should flow very well. A lot of rubber on the outsole. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, if that's good or bad. So. All in all, this is Jordan's take at doing an ultimate shoe, the most technology they can throw at it, and trying to give us the best running shoe they can. So how did they do? So how can I compare this? This is like if you're in school and you have a project with a team and you have that one team member who has, say, the newest laptop and the newest gear. I don't know if you've been in engineering or if you're in business school or art school, whatever it is, you have that kid who is has all the cool stuff, whatever it is, it, whether you have the newest microscope or telescope, I had a friend who is in physics, um, he has all the coolest gear and he can make anything happen. Like, hey, let's do this experiment. He's like, oh yeah, I can get that, let's do it. But they're not that great at the class. All right. So I don't want to say that that person is dumb, but you could have all the tools in the world 
And if you don't know what you're doing, it kind of doesn't matter. I'm sorry, Jordan Brand. That's what this feels like. You have a shoe made by a company that has every technology in the world that would make Brooks, even Saucony jealous that, man, you have access to all this. Maybe not Saucony. They're killing it. But something even Asics, name a shoe brand, Ultra, all this technology. And this is what they come out with. So as great and as comfortable as this really is for using this for a casual shoe, this might be the most comfortable casual shoe you can buy. Uh, and that's another topic. Maybe I'll do a video on that. Although Hess Kicks is someone I would recommend if you're going to look more on the casual side. But super comfortable shoe. I'm not going to take it away from them. But as we always do, let's start with the fit. All right. So the fit on this is narrow, really narrow. And because of the support pieces here, essentially, it doesn't have much give anywhere it's really weird so i went with a size 13 nike generally doesn't make wide shoes like most running shoe companies so i am generally a true 12 wide some shoes a 12 and a half actually fits better than 12 wide for my foot shape because i have a wide midfoot with this i had to go straight to a 13 and it actually fits me really well i don't know if i would even go down to a 12 and a half so maybe that means you should go up a half a size if you have any kind of wide foot if you have a narrow foot then it doesn't matter go true to size now the upper is very movable very moldable to your foot but it just doesn't quite hold you in the right places there's no there is some structure bands in here and you can kind of see where that is black and the rest of the shoe is green and it holds the midfoot pretty well, but I had a huge issue with really getting this to pull me back into the heel. It was very unstable as far as that. So the fit, this is one of the few shoes I had to do a runner's knot. I don't know if you guys can take a look there. So, and that actually helped quite a bit. So that pulled me back into the heel, but as you guys notice, there's not much going on in the heel area. So the fit was something that was really annoying and in those miles i could never quite get a truly comfortable fit on a run casually it's fantastic working away down to support remember i said how there's no or there's a ton of torsional rigidity well what that caused was my foot was not really able to move naturally how i wanted to move my foot where i'm more of a mid and four foot striker um, i kind of strike on the outside of my heel and i push off in this fashion that I almost couldn't do in this. This is wanting you to hit on your heel and you have to go off your forefoot. You're running one way. There is almost no flexibility to this. And I think one of the factors of that is not only these plastic pieces, but the fact that this is such a flat, rigid, rubber, hard bottom. So that is going to add to the longevity of this. This is something that can last you a long time, I believe. But just like looking at something like the Asics Glide Ride, which this reminds me a lot of the way it's curved, the way it has a big flat bottom, the way it has a very thick midsole. And Jordan Brand doesn't release the stack height of this, so I can't really tell you guys. But this has no separation. There's no segment here. There's nowhere for this to actually flex. A lot of running shoes, you're going to see flex screws coming this way. You're going to see it cored out down the middle, like a Vomero or like the even the Pegasus, where it allows your foot to move a little bit more naturally. You want some torsion rigidity. And as a running shoe, having it completely like this, this now becomes something that is more from the basketball side of things. But if you're thinking, well, hey, I'll just use this on the court. Because of this upper, you actually have very, very little lateral containment. And for running, that's not that big of a deal. I know a lot of runners talk about having or liking some lateral containment. As you turn a corner, you want to feel that you're at least still stable and you're still going to stay in the shoe. You don't feel like you're going to roll off or roll your ankle. This shoe feels somewhat like I'm possibly going to roll my ankle. Like I really do have to slow down. I'm not really contained laterally with all this support on it, as you would imagine. So you have support that is Overly abundant, yet not that supportive. You have a fit that is super light and flexible, but yet doesn't really hold you in the heel cup or on the footbed. And then down to the cushion. 
you have an incredibly bouncy ride that is super comfortable. Now the foam they're using, no one has been able to correspond if this is a React foam or in my estimate, I think this is their new Cushlon 2.0 foam. But that doesn't matter because you're feeling the bounciness of the zoom. Whatever the carrier is, it is. I don't think it adds or take away from the shoe. But all that cushion is essentially being given to you to bounce up but it's not giving you any flexibility or control over it. And the longer you run, the longer you start to notice that. So although it's very comfortable, I can't run how I want to run. I'm forced to run the way this wants me to run. And there's certain shoes you adjust to that where it becomes okay. And as long as you have a nice fit, as long as you're locked in, you can deal with that. But not having a locked in fit, not having the, the containment that I'm comfortable with. And then finally, Above all that, this is a chunker. This thing is heavy. So you have a heavy shoe. So I remember my first run on this, I went for just over a mile and a half and just took them off. It wasn't, it wasn't worth it. I ended up putting up the Pegasus 36 or 37 and ended up finishing and doing about two more miles. And it was a shock how different going from what it's supposed to be a running shoe to an actual running shoe really makes. Now, this is kind of a knock on the Jordan team trying to do a running shoe, but at the same time, this is one of the first times I have seen them try to do a full running shoe. Now, they had a couple in the past, and forgive me, I'm wrong, where they had the flight tech technology, they've had rear and forefoot zoom, but they're always kind of lifestyle shoes where they look like older Jordans or they take styling cues, and they're running shoes, but they're lifestyle, and they're not committed to actually giving us an amazing running shoe. And shoes like Brooks or Saucony or companies, if you prefer, those companies spend a lot of time dialing in the fit trying to see what materials work best, how it moves with the foot, really listening to a runner. And when you look at running shoes and you're gonna use them to go running, all the nuances really make a difference because you're spending more and more time. When I first started running or jogging, as it were, I could do 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, now closer to an hour. And for those guys who are running long runs on the weekend, they're running two, three, four, five hours. That's a lot of time to spend in a shoe so the nuances and the tiny bits that really help your foot feel more comfortable there's no distractions when you have that little bit less weight when you have a cushion that really helps you along your foot can move comfortably those details really come into play versus just a casual shoe you're walking around or something you were to work or even on the basketball court, even if you're playing for hours on end, it's a very different experience. And I don't think Jordan team has grasped that yet. Now they do have access to the entire Nike team and Nike's running line is fantastic. By and large, they do a great job and we can compare uh, their running line to someone else's, but the Nike running shoe line from the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly down to the Pegasus 37 or the Infinity React are all incredible shoes where they've listened to runners, made changes, and have given us great product. The Jordan brand hasn't really listened to that team. This is a shoe that has every ingredient to be amazing and it just isn't. This is $150, and for $150, you are getting a lot of technology. You are getting a super comfortable cushion setup that can easily be great for all day walking. But at the same time, if you guys look at my top five most comfortable shoes, this isn't on there because it's a little bit heavier. It's a little more clunky just the way it feels. It doesn't move with your foot. So although that cushion could easily be ranked in the top five, and I'm not going to give it a ranking here, and if you like the way it looks and you're just looking for a cushion and you're going to go on a long walk with the family, this is a great shoe. This is really cool. I'm keeping it in my collection. And shout out, this shoe is actually provided by one of you guys, one of your, our subscribers who connected with me on Instagram and said, hey, I got these shoes and I don't like them. Uh, would you like them at a discount? So I did buy them from him. It was a slight discount. And if he wants a shout out, I'll be more than happy to put his contact on Instagram. Let me know. So but I was very appreciative. I was able to get these at a little bit better price. 
and provide you guys hopefully a review that helps you out if you were considering this. Guys, girls, if you like that video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate you subscribing, watching the channel. Comment down below. I try to hit everybody back. If there's something I missed, there's something you want to see, or a comparison, or all the above. As always, this is Levi's Sneaker Gears. I really appreciate you guys, and I'll come at you later.